Hello and a warm welcome to all of you joining with us for the People's Church online service. It's such a joy and a privilege to be able to serve you week after week as we bring Christ, His message to your home. Today we continue in the series, The End is Not Near, But the End is Here. And I believe that God is going to continue to challenge you today as you give ear to His Word. Would you join with me in prayer as we commit ourselves into this service, into this time, and ask God to lead us and to bless us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a precious day that you have given us. And we ask you that your word will come to us powerfully. Father, we ask you as we open our hearts to your presence. Lord, we will feel the touch of your embrace, Lord. Master, we ask you that our lives will be transformed. Our hope will be renewed. And your name will be lifted up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I trust all of you are well this morning. And, uh, you know, we heard about what's ahead of us. The glory that is ahead in the new Jerusalem. And also about the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. The most pivotal moment in the whole history of mankind. Today we are going to go back a little bit from that time to the current time of what we are discussing in our series on the end times. And I believe that all of you have been here for the past three weeks. I believe many of you have been following the Saturday classes. And uh, today we are going to deal with the fourth uh, in the series. And I want to start with a flash of a song that was recorded by a singer by the name of Barry Maguire about 60 years ago. That song was titled The Eve of Destruction. And that song has lyrics that are very, very, if I may use the word, apocalyptic, that relates to the end times. It says the Eastern world, it is exploding. And today, I think it's the whole world. Violence is flaring, bullets are loading. You're old enough to kill but not for voting. You don't believe in war, but what's that gone you're toting? And even the Jordan River has bodies floating. The second verse says uh, that if a button is pushed, there's no running away. There'll be no one to save with the world in a grave. And friends, although that song was recorded almost 60 years ago, I think it is more relevant today than it has ever been before because we are surely on the eve of destruction, as we see it happening all over around us. You know, some of our pastors uh, got this series going early, uh, much earlier than even the events that are happening right now in the world. And I'm so glad for all that has happened as a result. So just to recap from what was shared last week, as Pastor Ashan shared the third sermon on this series, let's listen to a short clip of last week's sermon. Who opens the scroll? Who removes the seals? It's Jesus. He was the only one found worthy of passing judgment on the earth. The first seal is broken and it's going to be a time of deception and confusion. And during this time, there will be one person that slowly begins to rise to power. He will bring about amazing peace in a place where it seems impossible today with all that you read in the news. He will be revealed at the appointed time. Don't bother trying to be the journalist who breaks the scoop. Look at the second seal. Peace will be removed. It will be taken out of this world. The third seal. There's going to be famine everywhere. There's going to be war everywhere. There's going to be no peace anywhere in this world. Moving to seal number four. This event that is to come talks about a loss that is not 10 times bigger, not 20 times bigger. At a minimum, it's 29 times, multiples. Bigger than anything this world has ever seen. The fifth seal. The martyrs cry out, but they're told that they have to wait a little longer because you know what? There are going to be more tribulation saints that are coming. The sixth seal. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can withstand it? But I want you to think for a moment with me. These are just the first seven seals. Don't wait until the dream becomes a reality because it'll be too late to tell people about Christ. The tribulation is coming, whether people believe it or not.
So Pastor Ashan shared about the seven seals and how Jesus was given authority or had the authority to break those seals. As a result, we, we uh, heard about the horsemen of the apocalypse and what it entails. And in fact, I think the four horsemen of the apocalypse have been uh, shown through articles, through books, uh, through the movies. In many times, we have, uh, you know, these things are shown. So Pastor Ashan shared about that today, yeah, last week rather. And today, uh, we will go to the timeline in a minute of what we are covering. But the topic for today is titled, The Great Tribulation. What? Great Tribulation. What? Double Trouble. Because what Pastor Ashan shared last week, is going to increase with intensity in this period of time. So let's look at the timeline right now. As we see, as we heard about all these cosmic things that are going to happen, these uh, apocalyptic events, let's look at where we stand right now in today's uh, sermon. It's in the final three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. Last week, Pastor Ashan shared about the first three and a half years. But today, we are looking at the second three and a half years of the great, what is called the Great Tribulation. So this week, our focus is on the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. And I want to share this time frame through five thoughts. One, two, three, four, five. Five thoughts, okay? And I pray that these five thoughts will be clear to you as I share from this very disturbing and troubling period of man's existence. So point number one, the great tribulation reveals the true nature of the Antichrist. Now last week, <coughs> Pastor Ashan mentioned how when the Antichrist, uh, he comes as a man of peace. He comes as a peacemaker and he establishes some kind of peace on this earth. With the church not active anymore, evil begins to become rampant in the world. And Antichrist sets up many things, but I want to leave four things in this first point with you. Let's look at Revelation chapter 16 and verse 13. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs, they came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So here we find uh, the reference to the Antichrist and to Satan setting up, sorry, Satan sets up the unholy trinity. And there's a Satan, there is the Antichrist, and then there is the false prophet. So the Antichrist is a peacemaker who will become a world ruler. And he will find favor as a great peacemaker. While the false prophet will be accomplishing miracles and signs and directing worship towards Satan and his emissary who is the Antichrist. So this unholy trinity is set up by Satan. <coughs> the second thing is that the Antichrist brings a mark which we call the mark of the beast. And he, uh, he basically forces everyone to take this mark. Now, people have debated about this mark for, mark for centuries, and I don't think we can ever, at this point of time, identify clearly what it is, but we see how the world is moving to where everything that we have or even our very information is becoming more and more applicable and available to the world at large. Have you wondered how you can check something on social media and the next minute you get things that are very similar to what you have already checked? Sometimes it feels like what you are even talking can be identified through your phone. It feels like that sometimes. It may not be happening, but it feels like that. And there have been many things that are leading us in that direction. 
the credit card, identifications, chips, all these things are leading us. In fact, some people even thought that the vaccine that was given for COVID had some relationship to that. Now, I want to mention that the mark of the beast is no longer here, is not here anymore, rather. But we are going, going towards that direction. And he will establish a mark. Can we read Revelation chapter 13 right now? It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark of their right hands or on their foreheads. It says right hands and foreheads. Go on. So that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. So those who are there at the time of the great tribulation will have to take this mark. If not, they are going to face very, very serious consequences. And that's why we need to ensure that we are not there. The next thing that the Antichrist is going to do, and then the Antichrist will break his treaty of peace, and he will become a worldwide dictator who will control the whole world. And eventually, he will request, he will set up his image or an image in the rebuilt temple, and he will request, not request, basically force people to come and worship that image. Let's look right now. Uh, this was prophesied by the prophet Daniel, but Jesus himself reiterated it in Matthew chapter 24. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoke of through the prophet Daniel, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. So the Antichrist sets up an image, his image, in the temple, and he wants everybody to worship this image. Jesus said, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. So this is where the true nature of the Antichrist is revealed to the world. Now, over history, many people have been identified as the Antichrist. And I would like to put a list of some of those people who have been identified over time. Of course, none of them have been the Antichrist. Presidents of world countries have been identified as Antichrist. Religious leaders have been identified. Generals of warfare have been identified. Financiers have been identified. Scientists have been identified. And cultic leaders have been identified. And emperors like Nero have been identified. Peacemakers have been identified. Peace envoys. So different people have been identified as the Antichrist in history. But we can be sure that the real Antichrist is, is coming and is coming I believe in the near future. In fact, the Apostle John, even at that time, said many antichrists have already come into the world, but this will be the final that will try to uh, take over the entire world and, and bring, you know, work against the kingdom of God and against God. So point one is that the great tribulation reveals the true nature of the antichrist. Point number two is that the great tribulation will also herald the appearance of powerful witnesses. Powerful witnesses who will share the message of Christ to the world, even in the midst of the great tribulation. And as we look at the book of Revelation, we see that there are 144,000 Jews who are sealed by God, who will share the message. There will be an angel who will also share the message. And I want to touch on this aspect of it. There will also be two powerful witnesses who will rise up to share the message of God and to serve, uh, the, uh, serve God during that period. 
Let's look at Revelation chapter 11 and verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. So these witnesses will prophesy and preach for 1,260 days, and they will accomplish great things in the name of the Lord during that time of the great tribulation. Now these witnesses will have the power, amazing anointing. They'll be able to stop the rain like Elijah did. They'll be able to turn water into blood like Moses did. And they will be powerful witnesses for the Lord during that period. They are eventually killed by the Antichrist. And let's see what happens even as they are killed. Revelation chapter 11 verses 7 to 10. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, some of every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse to them burial. Now stop there for a minute. Just think about that. They will be lying for three and a half days, their bodies, and it says every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their dead bodies. Now just think for a minute. This was written by the Apostle John roughly 2,000 years ago. In those days, how could every nation, every tribe, every people come to see the bodies of these two witnesses in three days. It was impossible. They traveled only by horse or by ship or maybe some other form of such trans uh, transport. Many of them walked. How could every nation see their bodies in that short space of time? But now let me ask you, today, is that possible? How? Today, what happens in another part of the world can be seen instantly in our part of the world. So even though the Apostle John did not realize, couldn't understand, he faithfully wrote down what he saw. I'm sure it was a surprise to him. It was a mystery to him. But today we see how that has become a reality. And it says that after three and a half days, Revelation chapter 11, verse 11 and 12, that they are resurrected by the power of God and raised up to heaven. The word of God says the breath of God entered them. They stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. They heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. So even during that time, God was giving people a chance to repent and to turn to him. Even in the midst of all that was happening, God was giving people a chance. You know, we are living in a time where there's a lot of migration taking place. People are migrating to all parts of the world. In fact, uh, so often somebody talks to me and says, Pastor, we have decided to migrate. There's migration happening all over the world. As we realize what these witnesses stood for, I want to ask you a question. Number one, are you confident that you are migrating to heaven? I'm not talking about any other nation. Are you confident that you are migrating to heaven? Number two, whom can you help to migrate to heaven? Is it your relations that need that? Is it your school friends that need that? Is it your office colleagues that need that? Is it your neighbor that needs that? Whom are you helping? to migrate to heaven. You know, the power of the gospel has never changed, no matter what the world may tell us. 
the power of the gospel has never changed. And the power of the gospel is still the same today. When we share the message of the gospel, things happen. I mentioned about that song by Barry Maguire called The Eve of Destruction. Barry Maguire grew up in a season when the, the, the whole uh, sexual revolution and the drug revolution was happening in the 60s, uh, you know, particularly in the States. And, and uh, you know, it was a time when young people uh, were, 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 you know, uh, getting involved in all these things. There was the hippie movement and it spread across the world as well. And he was very much a part of that. But one day, he, in his story, he mentions that his grandmother told him as a little child, one day you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And in the midst of all, as he saw people dying around him, his friends getting into all kinds of problems and diseased and, you know, becoming drug addicts, he was searching for that truth because of what his grandmother had told him. And I'm sure that's the story of many of you here today. You were searching and then God came through, the gospel came through in your life at some time. And one day he got a copy of the New Testament, modern language. And he started reading it. And he was impressed by what Jesus had done. And by, by what Jesus said. And one day, it says, he says, that he fell on his face. And he told the Lord, if I wake up alive tomorrow... I'll follow you wherever you will lead me. His life was transformed. Today the gospel can transform anybody. So my question to you is, number one, are you planning to migrate to heaven? And number two, are you going to help somebody else migrate to heaven? Right through this year, we've been talking about completing the commission. We have a commission to share Christ, to take the gospel out. And I know that it's happening. Not only through uh, the church, but even through our missions programs. Let's continue sharing the gospel wherever we go. So point number one was that the great tribulation reveals the true nature of the Antichrist. Point two is that the great tribulation heralds the appearance of powerful witnesses. Point number three is that the great tribulation leads to divine or judgments on the earth against the kingdom of the Antichrist. Now I won't take time to go into all the details. They will put up a, 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 a visual up there for you which Pastor David sent to me. I don't know how clear it is. But there are two sets of judgments that will fall. One is called the judgments of the seven trumpets. And the other is called the judgments of the seven bowls. Now, if you look at that, the first set on, your, on the left-hand side of the screen, it talks about one-third of the earth's vegetation being affected. Already we are talking about famine. Just imagine how things will turn out. It talks about one-third of shipping and the seas being affected. It talks about fresh water being poisoned. I read that we apparently only roughly two and a half to three percent of water in the world is drinkable. And of that, actually, it's a much lesser portion that's actually drinkable. Just imagine what would happen. It talks about the sun, moon, and the stars, and galactic signs, the sun being darkened. You know, I remember one day, not too long ago, a few years ago, we were going up to Kandy by car, and all of a sudden, it seemed very dark. And I was wondering for quite a while, 
And apparently we found later, I didn't know, that there had been some sort of an eclipse that had happened. In fact, the first eclipse I ever uh, or got, a, you know, kind of that I realized what it's about, uh, kind of surprisingly came through a Tintin book called The Prisoners of the Sun. For those who love Tintin books, uh, a solar eclipse there. But, you know, when the sun gets darkened, uh, when the moon gets dark, you know, loses its light, it can get very scary. In fact, I read just this morning that there, is a, there are some parts of the world, uh, definitely in some, the north of Alaska, where they don't have light or real light, that, like we know, for at times in the winter season for about two months. And I can just imagine, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in that situation. Just imagine. And then... More, roughly half the world's population is going to be lost in the midst of all these things as there are demonic attacks that happen on the earth. And it goes down. I won't take much time to talk about the signs, but hey, friends, you need to be at that class on Saturday so that you can ask the questions you want, you can find clarifications, you know, because different people interpret the end signs uh, in different ways. But you can ask all the questions you want when you come. You know, we can't do it in a service like this. So please come along on Sunday, Saturday, this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock. And you'll be able to get all the answers. You know, but the sad thing is that with all that's happening, there's still opportunity for people to repent. And the Bible says God is not willing that anyone should, repent, uh, should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But see what happens with humans. Let's look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. The rest of the mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent. Of still the, did not repent. Go on. Of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, and bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. They worship demons, idols of gold, silver, and so on. They didn't repent of their murders, their magic cards, their immorality, or their thefts. In fact, Revelation 16 tells men, gnaw their tongues in agony and curse the God of heaven because of the pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. So to wind up today, as the Antichrist reveals his true nature, the witnesses bring forth the message of God in the midst of the great tribulation. The trumpets and the bowls of judgment are released and then it shows or brings us to the highlight of this time frame with the return of Jesus Christ on this earth. So the events of the great tribulation are, are followed by the glorious return of Jesus and now he comes as king and judge of the whole world. Matthew 24, 30 says, At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And look at the word again. All, all, all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. We thank God for the return. When Christ comes with the hosts of heaven and with his people, the body of Christ. Let's look at Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 16, or parts of it. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. 
on his robe and on his thigh he has the, this name written king of kings and lord of lords we thank god for all who come to christ who accept the work of the cross during the time of the great tribulation there some of them will pay a very great price but many will turn to christ and when christ returns satan brings his whole armies to battle and that final battle will take place which is called the battle of armageddon on the battlefield of a place called megiddo the 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 visual will come up on the map uh, of uh, megiddo as it stands and uh, this is where the final battle will happen as the satan's armies try to overcome of course we know that christ will establish his rule as king of kings and lord of lords you know as you look at the world today we see so many visuals of destruction in the world we see the earthquakes we see the wars we see the the the, the tsunamis and then if you look at the entertainment industry we see all these movies like the avengers and star wars that bring up these whole battles of you know battles that are very uh, cataclysmic if i may use that word very very dangerous uh, huge signs uh, in the skies and the call, you know in the, all over the world and i think the last avengers film was titled infinity war yeah. this is the war of armageddon this is on the battlefield of megiddo and it says here then i saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army but jesus always conquers and jesus will conquer and establish his kingdom on this earth and it says that the beast in revelation 19 the antichrist was captured and the false prophet and the two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur and satan is bound so my friend we are always on the victory side don't let the things that you that happen around you affect you very bad you know uh, bring fear and anxiety with christ we are always on the victory side and eventually jesus will establish his kingdom on this earth but what about us right now how are we getting attracted to things that draw us away from god are we getting attracted to things that hurt the work of god in our lives one final scripture before we close for today from luke chapter 21 and a warning from jesus verses 34 to 36 be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with cruising drunkenness and the anxieties of life and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap for it will come on all those who live on the face of the earth be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the son of man talks about preparing our hearts always being watchful and always being in prayer pr- prayer awaiting the coming of our lord when he comes for his bride the church you know with all that is going to happen none of us should miss the coming of the lord and i'm talking now of the coming when he comes for his church which is called the rapture not this second coming but when he comes for his church that was discussed 2 weeks ago in the form of the rapture when he takes his church the body of christ to be with him but you know there may be somebody here you are still not sure of your eternal position whether when christ comes for his church whether you are ready for that 
And if so, I want to give you an opportunity to accept Christ into your heart today so that you can set it, you know, settle it in your heart that you have been forgiven, you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and that you can be ready to meet him when he comes for his church in the rapture. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if there is somebody here, you have never ever accepted Jesus Christ into your life and received his cleansing, his forgiveness. Or maybe you want to recommit your life to Christ because you feel you're not in the place you should be. In these closing moments, I want you to just, while everybody is in prayer, maybe one person, just lift your hand up and let me see it because I want to pray for you before I close today. Father, I pray that if any of us are being weighed down by the things of the world that are affecting our love for you, that are taking the first love in our hearts away from you, Lord, that you would help us to turn around in, our, in, in directing our lives, O oh God, and in giving you the first place in our hearts at this point of time. Lord, help us, I pray. And I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So just to recap as we close today, Point one, the great tribulation reveals the true nature of the Antichrist. He will break his covenant. He will establish his image. He will bring the mark of the beast and he will direct worship towards himself. Point number two, the great tribulation heralds the appearance of two of powerful witnesses. Point number three, the great tribulation leads to the judgments of the trumpets and the bowls on this earth. Point number four. The highlight of this period will be the return of Christ with his saints and the heavenly host to establish his kingdom. Point number five. Is the close of the great tribulation, which is the battle of Armageddon. Next week, as we close this series, we will be discussing about the millennium in which the Lord Jesus establishes a thousand-year reign, the final judgment, and the, an eternity with the creation of the new heavens, the new Jerusalem, and the new earth. Let's all stand together. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us today. And we thank you because your word changes us and transforms us. Master, I ask you that today, we will come to that place of repentance. Lord, we will come to that place of setting aside everything that drags us away from giving our lives totally unto you. And Father, even as we look forward to your second coming, Father, I ask you that you will give us the strength to persist in this journey. Not only so, that you will give us the encouragement to always share the love of Jesus with those we love. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen.